Hello, my name is Estrella Vargas and I'm a proud employee here at Can TV. Today I have the honor of interviewing Maria Lopez and Pepe Vargas, who are both from the International Latino Culture Center of Chicago. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And today we're going to talk about the amazing Latino Film Festival, which happens every year. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? A little bit. <laughs> or a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's after 24 years, we know a lot about the festival. But the most important thing is for yeah, people to pay attention and make the effort because we have worked very diligently uh, to put together a, a sample of the really the best Latino film uh, from everywhere, from Latin America, Spain, the Caribbean from the U.S. and definitely from Chicago as well. And I think uh, we have a very important platform at this time to really showcase uh, what's out there and the kind of stories Latinos are telling. Um, and, you know, we want to share that with uh, the whole city of Chicago. Yes. And I saw that the poster that is behind us, and I can show you um, a little closer here. Um, so this poster, um, every year you all have a um, contest and choose the poster that will uh, represent this year's Chicago Film Festival. And so can you tell me a little bit more about why this poster was chosen and, you know, let's tie it into the politics that are happening because as we know, Latinos and borders are inseparable in politics, although we are more than just borders. Um, uh, what, what is the significance behind this, this poster? And, um, uh, yes. I mean, we had a, uh, an open contest. Uh, last year, for instance, uh, John Lady from Poland won the contest. And it's open worldwide. And this year, same thing. And I think we, we had done this for some 20 plus years. Open contest, so we call the artists, graphic designers, and it's a lot of people who submit. And this year we got some 600, uh, close to 650 mm -hmm. entries. And and when we saw all of these entries, and then we have a jury, meaning we had really nothing to do with the selection of the poster. Yeah. We run the contest, uh -huh. and as uh, we had to be as impartial as possible, so we have a panel of five judges who selected. And so they came down to this, and, and I think it's really appropriate, as you say, and meaningful. Right? Impactful, and um, we think it's one of our most impactful. We've had wonderful posters throughout all, all of our 33 years, but uh, this one, I think, is, is uh, one of the most impactful ones, and I think it really has a, an excellent message and a very prominent message. Uh, due to the times that we're living in right now. Exactly. And, uh, and that is what we do. We kind of open the door for artists to give us and share with us their ideas. And, and this time, well, the uh, designer who happens to be local. Oh, wow. And he, um, I think uh, artists, they had the ability to capture the historical moment. And, and, and also the judges who they uh, view this and they, they saw this is what is going on. There's a lot of things about the wall. Correct. Now build the wall. Yeah. And <laughs> nobody can build a wall because power in, in, the, in the soul of people, which is expressed through uh, the arts, film, poetry, music, dance, literature, so, and film. Is, is definitely one of the most powerful uh, ways of communicating and making a bird the feelings of people so it can break its world uh, no matter how strong they are. Yes. And we've received excellent feedback from a lot of people. When we announced the poster, we got a lot of phone calls and emails from people saying, you know, it was a great poster, uh, very impactful, and, uh, you know, they, they were asking when they could start buying T-shirts and buy posters. That's, yeah, that's amazing because I, I do want to uh, reiterate the fact that you said um, although, yeah, walls might stop people from, you know, crossing to another land, but, you know, the things that we create, um, they, they're they borderless. And, you know, this poster definitely captures that and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask more about, you know, this is the 34th um, film festival. So, like, compared to the first, very first one, like, how has it changed? How has it progressed? 
It really hasn't changed. The substance of the matter remains the same. How can we share our culture with a medium like film? So that has been since very since day one. Also, we want these films to be seen by as many people as possible, Latinos and non-Latinos. Mm -hmm. And also, it gives us the opportunity to kind of uh, recognize ourselves as a, as a family that is multinational, mm -hmm. is multiracial, different languages. So this is who we are as Latinos. And then how we can portray ourselves in films is to be really the best way possible for us to do it. And then we began doing other things. But in that, in that sense, it hasn't changed. The essence remains. Naturally, the first festival was attended by 500 people. Now it's on 2,500 people, 2,500 people who attend. Uh, it has grown, it's larger and more impactful, and uh, expenses also uh, much larger, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> The bigger it gets, the more you have to be expensive. Um, yeah, yes. we, we got to be the best, uh, the best film festival in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, that is important. I mean, we are in a city that it somehow embraces the, uh, the uh, foreign uh, impact, and that has given a lot, has room to really make a difference. People are usually waiting. The springtime is coming, and along with that, uh, the film festival is the warm of the Latino soul expressed through these films from Spain, Argentina, Chile, and everywhere, Cuba, Dominican Republic. So we bring the Caribbean here. Yeah. Without people <laughs> having to go there. So in that regard, it has, it has grown in terms of the number of people who attend films. We uh, This year we have more than 100, which has been sort of the standard lately. Uh, first year it was uh, 13 films and now it's more than 100. Uh, being number one in the country it is mm -hmm. it's, it's good. It's a, it's a luxury that you enjoy, but it carries also a big responsibility yeah. to make sure that we what we do is, is sound, is solid. And also because we speak on behalf of our community, we, we claim to be sort of the voice of the community. And that is that's something that we take seriously. Right. and do everything possible to make sure that we don't fail. Uh, betraying uh, the community that we speak on behalf of that won't be the right thing. So we do the very best we can to make sure that the film festival is an, an excellent platform for us to share the culture. Correct. And um, the, the topics that are portrayed are, how diverse are they? So I know, is it it's music? Is it mostly music or like art? Or, you know, how diverse are the films? They're very diverse. Um, you know, I also handle the programming of the short films along with the features. And, uh, you know, we realized there were a lot of uh, films this year that either had to do with, uh, you know, uh, hidden treasures. Somehow there was like the theme of a hidden treasure. Uh, there was a lot of uh, films that were addressing the issue of immigration and uh, undocumented youth and, uh, you know, the Central American immigrants or uh, young children who come to the United States and are on their own and, and the experiences that they go through and how they cope with the traumas that, that they've suffered. So I think, you know, it's, it's extremely diverse and, and I think these are all uh, films that address topics that are very prevalent and, and very important and that need to be addressed. So yeah, we have a little bit of everything yes. lined up. Well, they come in, in, the, in the form of uh, great comedies, heavy dramas, uh, political satires. We have some thrillers, good documentaries that are sort of uh, revealing situations that sometimes government wants to hide them. And so that is what the filmmakers do. They just bring up to Correct. expose them and, and share those messages and encourage people to take action. Correct. And so with that being said, we um, should show some of the trailers of the, the films that are going to be portrayed throughout the, the mm -hmm. festival. And um, this is called, this the first one we're going to see is called Quien Eres Tu? Um, who Are You? And it basically talks about um, health care and um, how Al Alzheimer's has affected a family 
in Puerto Rico. So, Política corruption. Correct, yeah. all of that. <laughs> good, well, not good stuff. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I'm gonna play it. Aquí está. Cumple de Ernesto. A ver. ¿Eso es verdad? Tú eres Ernesto, ¿verdad? Es broma. ¿Cómo se llama esa que está ahí, nuestra hija mayor? Elen. Usted tiene ciertas consideraciones con respecto a la reforma de salud. Es la privatización de los servicios de salud pública. Punto y se acabó. A mí me parece que es el camino a seguir. Suárez. Papi. ¿Qué pasó? Mami. Yo no puedo creer que tú la dejaste salir. ¡Yo! Y de repente le quitamos los ojos de encima por un minuto y... ¡Mamá! Sí, ya vele, me contó. Le pudo haber pasado algo, papi. Quita. ¿No te molesta que te pregunte por Aurora? Contrario. ¿Y su esposa? Yo espero que este sea el final de esta conversación. Estamos de acuerdo, ¿no? No. Y se mantuvo en secreto por petición del mismo funcionario. Ahí hay nombre, ahí hay contrato. Lo que pasa es que no sabemos con la clase de gente que estamos obligando. Con tu asistente y ahora con tu novia, pues claro. Para ya. Yo no soy el que estoy enfermo. Es tu madre. Yo tengo que seguir viviendo. Potente cual marejada fue su amor La playa de mi cariño, la razón Wow, that's very... That looks like a very amazing film. It tackles, you know, how politics and, and as a whole in the government can affect a family, but also how a specific, um, you know, um, health issue um, can affect a family in, internally. Mm -hmm. It's a massive and, film. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And Ari Maniel uh, Cruz, he had a film last year as well, and it was really popular. And, you know, we like to say he's kind of a darling of the festival. He always brings, you know, great films, and his films are usually really well attended as well. Mm -hmm. Peter. Oh, okay, yeah. I will. <laughs> um, so why do you think, like, uh, films need need to tackle, you know, these um, issues of like health care reform or, you know, um, things that are actually happening nowadays, but, you know, in a more, you, like you said, comical or more drama, dramatic way in, in films. I mean, that's, that's the role of artists. They capture the essence of what is happening or what happened. There are some historical dramas and also there are some science fiction that uh, they are living today but also their mind is way ahead and and creating something that in their minds would happen and eventually does i mean it does so that's what the, the uh, science fiction films do so and the artists do and, and in this case it's a situation is the uh, the hacker in puerto rico that is is, is deeply Corroded. Same here. Yeah. It's not an exception. So somebody who really sees that and has the tools to tell the story, that's what he does. A young director who is well familiar, uh, research a lot, put a script together, and then get actors who really portray that and uh, made something appealing to. And, and eventually, the great desire is how can we make people move? 
-hmm. change and take action and oppose to that and eventually change the situation. Correct. And another form of, you know, something very powerful that, you know, can travel across um, um, lands and oceans and can impact people is music. And our next film is uh, La Guitarra Que Vuela. Mm -hmm. And that one is very interesting. I mean, we can talk more about Paco de Lucia afterwards, but, you know, this, this film, um, you know, is going to tackle that, the, the industry of music and its power through film. Mm -hmm. So we can watch it. <laughs> Hola, buenas tardes, señores pasajeros, les habla el comandante, mi nombre es Alberto Lázaro y les doy la bienvenida a bordo de este vuelo de Iberia con destino a Nueva York. Me complace anunciarles que hoy viaja con nosotros una pasajera muy especial, a la última guitarra de nuestro ya desaparecido genio, Paco de Lucía. <risa> Paco de Lucia? Go ahead, my dear. <laughs> Not all at once. I mean, he was a genius. <laughs> yeah. And the beauty of this is that people who are also genius, great composers, and that's what we will see here, uh, Carlinho Brown from Brazil, or Gaetano Veloso. Uh, Alejandro Sanz. Uh, Alejandro Sanz, they talk about, they are genius themselves, but the other one way up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, the respect, the feeling, the connection, and also touching the guitar that that he designed, Paco de Lucia mm -hmm. designed, and then we see the process of making the film. It's, it's beautiful, and when I saw that, we just we we had to have this in the festival mm -hmm. because what it says and the feeling, and and also give us the opportunity to understand how music transcends capture the essence of the human being and then he's able to that's what musicians do in this case artists and um, when we decided to do this we thought about let's do something similar to what they had done because like i say it's nine countries that they had gone and then and, and so the the uh, filmmaker travels with paco de lucia's guitar mm. and so here uh, there is a young lady mexican She's an accomplished uh, flamenco guitar player. So we are having her playing Paco de Lucia's uh, guitar as he is doing, and other musicians have done it. And that would not go alone uh, too good without putting some tapas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have tapas, guitar, and sangria at Instituto Cervantes. So um. a little, also it's a tribute to something that we recognize, that we feel connected, that also that we embrace as part of our culture. Correct. This is part of, and, and, and that is what we wanted to do with the film festival. Not necessarily teaching people, but also convey that message that we, we had the responsibility to claim. Correct. Uh, and that is, we have an award um, that we give, and we call the Glory Award. And the first time we gave that award, we gave that to um, Celia Cruz. Oh. So we recognize her as an icon, um, her talent, the legacy, and also we wanted to make sure that that the new generations embrace that and claim that as to be part of, uh, of who we are. 
I'd also like to add that I think this is one of the films that's the most representative of her poster um, because it's all about how this guitar and Paco de Lucia's music has been able to transcend boundaries and borders and, you know, with the power of music, there are no boundaries. Correct. And music is, a, in, I like to say that music is in and itself, in of itself, like its own language. And like Absolutely. people from all over the world can understand music by just listening to it and you know, relating to it. And so this, this uh, film captures all of, you know, Absolutely. politics, you know, um, the beauty behind culture and music. And that's, that's what the, you know, the film festival uh, tries mm -hmm. to, that's like its mission, you know, like the, the goal of, of the film festival. And so um, I know you all have like, uh, like you said, you had uh, an event where you're gonna showcase this film and like have tapas and you know come together, um, but there's also like the closing, um, the the closing event, um, and you're gonna portray the 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 film called the summit. And before we talk a little bit more about why you chose this this film to conclude this amazing festival, and you know the importance of this film, let's watch it. <laughs> El presidente viaja a su primera cumbre internacional. Ahora, el mundo entero se va a dar cuenta de que la Argentina tiene un presidente invisible. Esta cumbre es importante para todo el mundo. Marina. Quiero que la metas en un avión y la traigas, hija. ¿Usted cree en el mal, presidente? El mal existe, señorita Klein. Y no se llega a presidente si uno no lo ha visto un par de veces al menos. Están mandando a alguien. ¿De qué estás hablando? Los Yankees. Señor presidente, es un honor conocerlo. ¿Pasó algo? Sí. ¿Cómo que la ve bien? No reacciona, no habla. Buenas tardes, doctor. Buenas tardes. Ella sabe que estoy acá, ¿no? ¿Usted qué sugiere, doctor? Concéntrate en mi mirada, que nada te desconcentre. ¿Por qué lo no tenías que hacer así? ¿Cómo no me di cuenta? Como si se estuviera inventando una vida que no tuvo. ¿Qué es esto? ¿Un interrogatorio? ¿Estoy acusada de algo ilegal o qué? Esto no puede aparecer. Su problema es que te subo bien. Digo lo que sé, o yo sé lo que haces. So why did you choose this song to conclude the event? Uh, it's, a, it's a political drama, uh, great actors. Um, the story, it is very relevant and it's real. It happens in, in real life and getting four presidents together to discuss serious matters. The president of Chile uh, is invited by a great actress that was here in Chicago. And we gave this Gloria Award that we gave Celia Cruz. Uh, so she invited that. Is uh, the president of Mexico also portrayed by a great uh, Mexican actor, president of Brazil and president of Argentina. That's the political thing and all the intrigue uh, that happened there, but also is the, the, the the family uh, drama, drama. And, and and the the beauty happens in the end is the summit is called La Cordillera in Espanol. La Cordillera. Yeah, because it's way up. Uh, I mean, it could have been another film, but this, <laughs> this is very, very appropriate. We wanted, we had to have a film uh, that closes the festival, and we want people to. Uh, Keep this in mind that the 25th festival is coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to close with a great festival and also kind of Puerto Rico, Argentina. They're very diverse. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. we uh, wanted to portray that. Um, so it's a great film. And so is the opening night. And in between, mm -hmm. we have more than 100 oh, for yeah. every country. So <laughs> A lot to choose. So there's, yes. a, there's a film for everyone. Um, but this one, I like it because, you know, it just shows how, you know, 
decisions um, can affect, you know, something bigger, like a whole continent. So, like, a decision, like, the, in, in fam like the family, like, uh, the family drama um, can affect, you know, the family and um, how it's just onto one person and there's, like, a lot of, you know, decisions and, like, pressure on, like, one person. And so, like, it, it's a little more dramatic, but, you know, it, it, it talks about, like, the, the, the reality of, like, um, you know, pre being a president. Um, and the pressure pressure of being a president. So. And also, it, I mean, to me, it also it could happen to the president of Mexico, but it focuses in, in the president of Argentina. Correct. Yeah. But every one of us had a family, mm -hmm. and a family drama and all of that. So it has the family, the political, and then there is a lot of things how together can sort of form um, a cohesive group that they will oppose the uh, the policies of the U.S. government because also there is uh, involvement in the U.S. government. Oh, yes. So they got together, how can we fight back? And so it's a lot of intrigue among themselves, a lot of discussions, a lot of drama. And underneath is the, the personal drama, the uh, president of Argentina and his daughter. Absolutely, and like the Puerto Rican film that we showed earlier, Quien Eres Tu, Who Are You? Um, it's the same thing where uh, the film addresses a bigger issue, but within that, yeah, you also get to see a lot of the family drama and the internal conflicts within the main characters. Yeah, because I feel like in, in politics in general, when uh, we usually forget that these politicians, you know, have families and also have, you know, uh, are like us who ha deal with, you know, problems at home and like outside. And so it just puts the human side to it. Absolutely. Um, because sometimes we think of them as like, you know, these robots that um, are making the de these big decisions that don't really benefit us but are for us. Or you so imagine like, that they have a perfect life correct. and everything's perfect. Yes. So these films are amazing, and that was the last film that we were going to show today. But I just want to um, let everyone know that if, that if you all have any questions about the Latino Film Festival or want to know more about it, to visit the, um, the, the International Latino Culture Center's uh, website. And here is their contact information. You can call them at 312-431-1300 or here's their email address and their um, local address. But also, if you go on their, um, the, the website that is in the screen, on the screen, um, you can check out the schedule of all the films that are gonna be happening, um, and then you can view trailers, um, view more information about them, and you know pick the right ones because uh, there are like you said a hundred films <laughs> plenty of options <laughs> correct and you want to choose the right one so this is an amazing opportunity to have you all here and you know put a face to like this organization because it's so big um, and this festival in general and so thank you so much for coming in today and is having. there something that you want to you know let the viewer the audience know when they're going to these events or to going into the the, the theater and watching these films like is there like something that you want them to keep in mind throughout the festival i would just say definitely do not miss out on the opportunity to watch these films because it's these films are really hard to, to find and really hard to, you know to come across uh, a lot of these films you won't even find in Netflix uh, so you know if you miss your chance to attend one of these screenings that's probably going to be it um, so I'd, I would say definitely do your research check out our website um, make your list of films that you want to attend and and come <coughs> and check us out okay. I mean unlike Hollywood that every Friday people line up to see what is we just come once a year. Yeah. Yeah. So we encourage people to go and see as many films. People usually ask me, what will I see? And my recommendation is whatever you can see. That, They're that all good. Be a good <laughs> yeah, I true. mean, I encourage people to see as many as, as they can. It's a unique opportunity. Uh, I say most definitely kind of go and see and check mm -hmm. out. And, and, and they do, and they are happy with that. They are with English subtitles, so they can mm -hmm. bring their non-Latino friends to uh, travel throughout the Latino universe without really <laughs> leaving Chicago, paying only thirteen dollars, okay. going to the AMC, uh, River East Twenty One theaters. Everything happens there. We have other location, but that's pretty much the main one. 
All right. Well, thank you so much. It was an honor, you know, having you all here and, and getting to know more about this festival. And uh, we look forward to it. And thank you so much. Thank you.